What's up, beautiful people? It's your girl, it's Leanne the Skip List Out. It's Music Friends podcast series. I'll have up a beautiful photo and some more information about this beautiful Jordana Delgado from Vancouver area, local musician who's just released an album. Welcome to the show, Jordana. Thank you, Leanne. How are you doing? Good. So uh, community, I just want you guys to know while I flow and I grow, um, I had the chance actually to find Jordana on Instagram. I love her work. I loved her energy. We had an instant connection. Instagram, instant connection. <laughs> <laughs> then we had lunch and we were very relatable energetically and um, musically. And I feel very gifted to offer the community another friend of mine that grows not only in my heart, but an opportunity for you guys to get tapped into wonderful creativity that's out there in music and action, putting life into action. So Jordana, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to music and more about your album. So I'm a, I always say I'm a storyteller. I'm a storyteller first because I tell stories with music. And then I happen to be a pianist and composer and singer songwriter. So I, I, I write um, piano pieces and also songs, but only with piano and, and voice. And um, I didn't start in music officially until I was 13. Uh, I didn't start playing piano uh, until I was 13, but my parents both were working in the music industry. My mom was a manager and my father was a musician too. So I was around music since I was very young and I was, um, I was going to uh, live shows all the time because I mean, my mom was a manager, so she, she had to be in some shows and she always um, got tickets for uh, children shows. And I always went to, to all these kind of uh, live shows. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, um, I asked my parents to play piano when I was four, but I had to insist a lot for years <laughs> until I got it at 13. Mm. That's a long, that's what, 10 years of practice or what? Um, uh, you mean the piano when I started piano? Yeah, so you, you insisted for a piano at age yeah. four and then you finally got it all together by the age, you said 13, yes. 14? Yeah, 13. Yeah. So that's that's a pretty long period of time for practice or just kind of finding out that that's the instrument for you. Oh, so I was um, I was experimenting by myself. So I remember that at first I was singing in my room to some tapes, uh, children music or whatever music I had. And then uh, we learned to play the recorder at the school. Mm -hmm. So I was playing the recorder all day. I was picking up by ear all the tunes that I heard on TV or on the radio. And then when I was, I think I was 10 or so that my parents gave me this little keyboard like that. I think it had like an octave and a half, <laughs> very, very little. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did the same thing I did with the recorder with the with a little keyboard and I started playing by ear all the tunes that I heard. And then we also had um, a classical guitar at home. So at some point my parents say, okay, do you wanna take guitar lessons? And I say, yes, whatever, just give me whatever. I just wanna make sound. <laughs> Aww. And I was uh, taking guitar lessons for a couple of years. It mm -hmm. was a group class, uh, we had a lot of fun. And then finally, when I was 13, they saw that I was serious about music and they put me into piano lessons. Mm, wow. And that was here in Canada or is that um, back in? In oh, Spain. In Spain. Spain. In Barcelona, yes. In Barcelona. Sorry, my light is just too bright. I can feel like I'm turning white as a ghost. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so you, got, you got the culture, you got the parents, and then you're growing. How'd you get to Canada? What issues did you come to Canada? So it was a mix of things. Um, yeah. We both, my husband and I, wanted to live an adventure. We wanted to live in a country where we could learn more English and be able to speak English all day. Mm. And also my husband's job uh, wasn't very good in Spain. He couldn't find the position he wanted. So we were looking for other countries and Canada came, came up 
and we just applied and we got it and we're here. <laughs> mm. So uh, when I say like this, it, it, it seems like a very short process, but it was a long process, a lot of paperwork, and we've been here for six years now. Mm, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I can understand what it's like to have that anticipation. Did you ever write music about getting excited about coming to Canada? Uh, actually, no. 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 <laughs> that would have been was, like, uh, you know, I'm on my travels to a new <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I'm going to Canada. <laughs> yeah, All right, guys. So, you know, but you know, it was a very stressful uh, period of time. Uh, the months before and the months, uh, the first months here and the, the months before coming here were very stressful. You have to just leave a life behind. You have to decide what you do with all your stuff and just cancel bank accounts and all the accounts you have there, all life you have there, you have to just cancel and close it. And, and that was very stressful, actually. Oh. So no time for writing music when I was <laughs> at that moment. You know, what's funny while we're sharing a little bit about you here, reflecting mm -hmm. that is like, I have found in the worst of times, even the sorrow, you know, the sorrow, some sorrow is so hard to feel expression, but those are the most richest emotions to express. You know, I, re I recently wrote a lot of music through, through sorrow, through a uh, connection I have too. So I just thought I'd throw that out there to the universe and anybody watching that loves music, you know, it's hard. I think we all make music about the happy ending, but I feel like some of the hardest emotions, if we're becoming music, when we express it, we, we can release some of those emotions. So I just wanted to highlight there because I've been doing that myself through healing. Um, okay, so you, we, we met each other on Instagram. You've got a journey of music from your childhood. You got to Canada. Now, did you go to school? In Canada? Yeah, for, well, for music. Did you do oh, school? Yes, yes of yeah? course. I went to the conservatory in Barcelona. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, that was many years ago. But as soon as I've, I I was trained on classical music, so but I soon when as soon as I uh, finished my degree, I just left the classical music behind and I started uh, learning jazz and pop harmony and arrangements in modern music. All that stuff was like more appealing to me than mm -hmm. classical music. Um, I was very into classical music when I was at the conservatory, but I don't know, I got tired or I needed, I needed, I think I needed a change. Because Let's go along with your personality, you're, you're such a beautiful, expansive artist, you know, now let's talk about yeah. this album that you have out. Is this your first album? Yes, it is my first album. It's called Rainy Times. And I just called them last week. So I'm just going to show it because I'm really excited <laughs> oh I love it yeah I've been following you. I've been watching all the little blurbs and stuff so um just while we're talking what's your Instagram again uh my Instagram is Jordana Delgado Music okay so we'll put that under this mm -hmm. interview when I design our stuff tonight and then I'll make sure that that's there and any links that you have is it on Spotify or where is it at it is on Spotify iTunes Pandora Amazon Music you name it it's everywhere oh wonderful yeah, so so letting the audience know a little bit about that. Now, let's talk about this journey with the new album. How did it start? What was the inspiration? Let's get that all out there. So the album is called Rainy Time. So inspiration is rain. Okay. Of course. <laughs> um, so I lived in a place for all my life where it doesn't rain. And then when it does rain, it's very annoying. And people don't want to go out. And it's a very... Very understand and very understandable um, excuse to cancel plans and all that stuff, right? And then I moved to Vancouver when it rains all the time. Mm. So all of a sudden, I was like, in this, oh, what, what, what is that? That all that rain all the time, so annoying. Uh, but I had to learn to live with it, and I had to learn how to love it. Mm. And it actually was very inspiring. I realized that. Uh, rain inspires the earth to the plants for for the plants to grow right mm. and I thought I wonder what the rain can inspire in me what, what the rain can grow in me so I I realized that 
yeah, there are so many kinds of feeling about the rain. When it rains, you feel sad. You, f- you can feel lonely. You can feel like being introspective and going in, inside you and, and think about whatever you need to think about. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you remember your past and you feel nostalgic. Um, you feel like being home. Mm. And you also can feel like playing, playing outside. Uh, under the rain and dancing under the rain right so there are so many feelings and so I didn't write all the music uh, thinking about the rain actually because uh, in the album there are um, there are piano pieces that I wrote like 20 years ago Mm -hmm. Uh, but when I sat and uh, when I sat to think about the album I realized that I already had some pieces written that had very rainy feeling Mm. and yeah so I decided to to put them in there Mm. and also I wrote new music and I finished some unfinished uh, pieces that I had and yeah now we have it here it has um, 10 tracks in total Mm. it's seven piano pieces and three songs oh wonderful Mm. so tell us a little bit about those pieces other than okay what's your favorite well, I'm sure every every part of music, you can't put a favorite on it, but what would you say would make people, from your perspective, would make people think about the album? Like, you know how every album has one song, kind of like when Madonna came out with um, that light album in the, 19, the late 1990s, and she was all in her um, Hindu awakening, and that one, there was one song, you know, that just made us think about that album, or what's your one song you think that makes everybody think about that album? That's a difficult question. I think everybody is going to find a different one. Mm. Um, for me, it may be the first one. Mm-hmm. Tell us the about first it. one is called Pandora. Mm-hmm. And I wrote it inspired by the Pandora box. By Pandora box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I wrote it uh, thinking about the moment when Pandora opened that box. Oh. Yeah. Um, because there is this at the beginning of the piece, there is this calm atmosphere, and then Pandora opens a box, and you can feel like the music gets more excited, and and all kinds of stuff start coming out, and then at the end we go back to the first music that we heard, but it's a little bit different because the world is not the same after that action that Pandora did, mm. right? So I think for me is is that one is also very metaphorical because this is my first album right and and actually it's kind of like opening the pandora box um once you put out there an album then your life changes right i wasn't doing instagram i wasn't doing all these social media platforms that i have now i didn't know anything about video editing or i didn't have any idea about how to uh, record an album so my life change because of this action right (laughs) Mm, so wonderful I love growth Mm. and I think there's so much one of the the reasons why I was even attracted to you first of all there was a flow you know there's an NG audience you know if you want to know about a beautiful musician think about the beautiful human behind it there's a natural flow where we sparked love and love just happened you know and then I met you and then even more was there and I was like I'm so grateful and I think every friend that comes into our lives they open that reflection for me for music, you know, like I've written so much music. I went back to school for music. And then I look, I look forward to when I have a spark with another musician. And then all of a sudden I have the availability to offer an opportunity to grow where I would love to learn more piano or be reminded or accountable Mm -hmm. by who I surround myself with. And then I look at you as a teacher and I always have these people in front of me, you know, like, okay, Leanne, go do this, go do this, this, this. And so, you know, what I honor is that I have a, I have time to use my doors and windows with Bliss Don't Network, Conscious Living Radio, the different places that we're going to put this video. Guys, make sure you guys add her. Okay, I'm going to put the link. I'm just making sure you know <laughs> as we talk. So this is this is what it's all about, is that like in order to get great music made, it comes from inside. In order to get vulnerable enough and to get it out, then to produce it and then get even more vulnerable to learn and grow with being you in the world and vibrating that. And the more that we're vibrating 
a trust of our fingerprint and our value and in wanting to, you know, give the best of ourselves every day, you know, I find tenfold the universe comes back. So I'm just trying to help that process for you. I want to make sure that more comes to you, more we have to learn together. And um, let's talk about another song. So some of them that were that were just piano pieces and then Pandora, Pandora is vocal, right? Uh, Pandora is a piano piece. Okay. What's the vocal piece? What's your... Uh, I have three uh, songs. Mm -hmm. in the, album. Uh, the one that is released already is in the summer. Mm -hmm. I saw that, yes. In the nice. summer is kind of like, it's the last track of the album and it's uh, like um, afterthought. After all the rainy stuff, <laughs> mm. after all the introspection, because the album is very introspective, there is the rain. I ah, sorry, there is the summer after the rain. There is the summer. There is always the sun. Um, mm. So I wrote that because also the summer is my uh, favorite season of the mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we had two more uh, songs in the album. They are called Rainy Times. One is Rainy Times, just like the album. And it's coming out in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is Take Me Far. Mm, beautiful. Well, I'm just so happy to support art. Paolo Marilio from Latin Coover, you're watching this. I'm sure I'm going to be taking you to this. This is who needs to be in Latin Coover Festival next year playing. And all the people hearing some other options that are in the Latin community. Um, I just had to make that point out because my heart was like, I had done Latin Coover's, um, uh, worked with that team in 2018. And I did their fashion runways and I put on dancers and musicians and DJs. And I really feel like if we're going to support or, you know, smart talent, if I have the chance, whether I'm singing or somebody else is on a stage and I have an ability to do both and grow, it's time to use our time wisely, you know, and, and I feel like the music industry, they say that there's not enough money in the music industry. I feel like there's not enough money in anything in this world, unless you are passionate about being a loving connector about loving what you do and loving and sharing. So I see that about you. You, 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 you have a, a school too at home. You teach children. I teach children and adults. I mm. teach all ages. All I ages. Teach right here. I teach online right now. <laughs> so you're teaching vocal or piano? I teach piano. piano. Piano and music theory. So from there, you could do a basic vocal warm up. Wouldn't you be able to, like, do re mi fa so latino? <laughs> <laughs> we could. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll be like knocking on your door. Okay, let's do some solfege. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, so we want to we want to give a shout out community, um, especially conscious community, because I'm a big part of the conscious community to art because art transforms us. Art is um, where we're able to be the observer because consciously we come in and we become the observer of life into appreciating another beautiful human. My path is nirvana, reflecting human to human, giving that awareness that you know, creativity is that pillar that changes our moment. And I would love for everybody to go on a journey with your music. So let's I'll leave some links. Anything else that you want to leave here? Last minute things that you want to talk about? Do you want to give a shout out to anything? Yes, of course, my music videos, because Rainy Times is also a story. And uh, I came up with a story that develops through all the tracks of my album. And we shot it like a short film. And I'm releasing one episode every month. Uh, we have already out three episodes. Episode four comes in three weeks or so. So yeah, um, I want everybody to check it out because that's my little baby <laughs> out there. That's wonderful. And so you're on Instagram. Are you on Facebook? I'm on Facebook, uh, Jordana Delgado Music. Okay, so it's a music page. And your Instagram and then your YouTube is? Jordana Delgado. Okay. And Spotify, Jor Jordana Delgado. Yes. Okay. So my friend, I'm so excited for you. I'm so grateful for you. This is our Thank first you. podcast together. We can make this just an informative ability to get there and then we'll plan something even more powerful for next time. But I'm glad that we made it here today and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Let's have lunch and make sure everybody checks out. We'll put the links below. And many blessings to you, Divine Sister. Be well and keep rocking. Thank you, Thank you for having me. You're Bye. Welcome. Bye.